Hi, Casper, my body. So, did you guys hear about the crocodile that gave a virgin birth? No, it's not a punchline or a joke. It's a real thing that actually just recently happened. Uh, there was an American crocodile at, uh, at uh, what was it, Parque Reptilandia in Costa Rica. I've actually been there a few times, really awesome. Uh, if you ever in Costa Rica, go visit the guy that owns it, uh, Quetzal. He, I think he's from the Bronx, so it's really funny because he's like a New Yorker, but he is fluent in Spanish perfectly. He's like, hey, como estas? really funny if you know him but anyway so this crocodile actually did give virgin birth it's a case of what is called parthenogenesis okay and so this has been documented in several different species already uh birds snakes lizards turtles and then now in crocodilians casper come here we'll get him back over here for the video too come here buddy now all those animals i just listed uh they do share a common ancestor with the archosaurs okay and so it is believed that most likely dinosaurs could also do the same thing and give a virgin birth in this this parthenogenesis right so that's really really cool really interesting and really goes to prove the point that uh life uh finds a way because it will and i mean just imagine if you made your your jurassic park full of female dinosaurs and then they were giving virgin birth and producing cloning themselves like that i think that would have been a better storyline honestly but um but yeah really really cool how they can actually do that now again this has been documented in other things and a lot of the time when they do uh produce parthenogenetically like that the offspring do come out kind of messed up um it doesn't always work the offspring are not always viable but there is a species of snake called the Brahmini blind snake, and the entirety of its species are all female and they're all clones of each other. There has never been a single male of this species of snake ever found. And it's also the most widespread snake in the world. They're right here in Florida. They're all over the world because they're this little tiny like worm of a snake. They're super small and they are spread throughout the world in a uh, potted plant in the soil. And they eat like termite eggs and ant eggs and stuff. So they spread everywhere but just another super interesting super weird case where like you have this this snake whose entire species is female and they're all clones of each other so imagine if that were the case with like these guys you know casper come here come back over here you were not like immediately interacting with him or feeding him he's just like hey you guys are boring i'm gonna leave come here buddy but um yeah it really makes you wonder you know so like if that case occurs with these snakes could that happen with other species right or did it already happen in the past come come here once you get once you in the frame gotta keep this thing interesting he's over there chewing on leaves you trying to eat a salad bro eating all the leaves but yeah so like it just makes me think like imagine if there was a dinosaur species or like a pterosaur that was entirely female the entire species was female just like these brahmini blind snakes and they're all just clones of each other it's really cool to think about or in the future tense too you know as uh humanity unfortunately ravages this planet and destroys everything imagine in some post-apocalyptic future where an entire species just clones itself and that's its entire existence now speaking of crocodilian breeding and their offspring and whatnot uh this is another really cool topic to touch on with these guys and that is that the gender of their offspring is typically determined through what's called temperature dependent sex determination and the same with uh turtles as well actually so where the temperature of the eggs uh incubation is going to determine what gender the offspring come out at now with parthenogenesis though they all come out female okay um and i think i think far as I know, regardless of how you were to incubate, they're always going to come out female in that case because they're clones of the mother, right? Obviously, I'm not a geneticist, so maybe somebody can correct me a little bit on this if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's my understanding of the situation. Now, normally, though, with crocodilians, uh, they, they will have the warmer, uh, the incubation is going to produce all males, and then cooler is going to produce all females. And if you have that sweet spot in the middle, you get a mix of male and female. And then on sea turtles, it's the opposite. So the way that I remember this is uh, when you're at the beach with sea turtles, you've got hot chicks and cool dudes, okay? So hotter temperature female, cooler temperature male. And then with crocodilians, it's inverted. So in the swamp, you got hot dudes and cool chicks. I don't know, it doesn't sound as good. But either way, that's how that does kind of flip-flop. And it's uh, really interesting that that is going to determine what gender they come out. Now, 
that is extremely useful in conservation though, because that means that if we're trying to produce uh, a viable population of some species of crocodilian that's endangered or a turtle population, we can then artificially select for the gender ratio desired. And so in that case, you would want to have like, since they're not monogamous and one male can service multiple females, if you want to put it that way, you can have a higher ratio of female than male. And that way he can mate with all of them and then we have a much higher reproductive success okay so that is a way that we can kind of engineer to be able to have a higher success rate for a species and it's super helpful in captive breeding and reintroduction programs really cool right but it's a double-edged sword where this becomes a problem is through deforestation or climate change where we have unnaturally hot areas and then they all in the case of the crocodilians they all come out male so this can be either Climate change is the big concern everybody's worried about. We've not seen that yet happening, but as far as deforestation goes, something that has been documented that's a big problem is for uh, for turtles and for crocodilians, you know, they're, they're aquatic animals um, that are going to be nesting along the water's edge. And so what is the first place that always gets logged by humans? Are areas on the water's edge because that way they can cut the trees, roll them in the water, and then float them down river. So historically, those trees are always the first ones that are cut. And so if those trees are cut, it gets rid of the shade over the bank, and then those eggs are exposed to full sun, you know? Now, they're digging them into a hole, depending on what species we're talking about, either a mound or a hole. Either way, they're protected from the sun somewhat, but it's still gonna raise the incubation temperature artificially. So with crocodilians, that means you can end up with an overabundance of male animals and then no females to be able to breed with. So that can cause a major issue uh, for conservation in these areas. Now, again, depending on what species we're talking about, you know, turtles, opposite, whatever, but you can just see how this does become a major problem for these animals as we deforest those areas peripheral to the waterways. Um, or again, long-term, if we're talking about climate change, if you have areas that are just way too hot and outside of that window, it's going to artificially select for all of one gender and I can really mess things up, you know? So that's a big concern with climate change coming through. So to bring this back with parthenogenesis though, it's really interesting to consider how many animals might be able to do this as well. We've documented it in a handful of animals, but that's typically only through captive scenarios because otherwise if it's happening in the wild, how would you know? How would you be able to document it, right? Um, it's not like you're going out there and doing you know, DNA tests on all the animals and knowing who their mothers were and checking back, right? So it's very difficult to document in the wild, but in captivity, uh, it has been documented throughout several different species. Now, that being said, how many animals are doing it that we're not aware of, right? So that's what makes it really cool and really interesting is for all we know, maybe all reptiles can do it, you know, all species of reptiles. I mean, that's a fair uh, assumption to make that would make sense. Now, we don't have evidence to say that all of them can do it, but it would be fair to assume as a possibility. Now, there are no mammals that are known to be able to do it, though. Um, sh uh, fish and, well, sharks. Yes. You can bring okay. them up, sawfish, sharks. Now, also, sharks can do it, uh, fish can do it. So it seems like mammals, I'm not an expert here, but I'm pretty sure mammals are about the only thing that doesn't do it because of the way that our sex chromosomes work. And again, I'm not a geneticist, and uh, so I am not exactly uh, completely in full understanding of this whole topic. So I apologize if I you know, got anything wrong. Let me know if you happen to know better. Um, but that's my understanding of it so far from my cursory research. But it would be, again, really cool to find out just how many different animals can do it. Anyways, though, guys, I guess that wraps that one up. I don't have that much to say about it because, again, this is not my forte, but hopefully you guys learned something cool about it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.